Hello again YouTube, it's PD Two Finger, and I'm here to talk about pedal popping. So if you build pedals, or maybe you bought a, a more affordable pedal, and you notice that when you're clicking it on and off, it's making a loud popping sound. Well, that can be a little bit disturbing, especially if you're running reverb and delay, and there's some more gainy pedals further down the chain. It's going to amplify it, and then you have that reverb and the echo, like pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Now, if we're engaging our pedal in the middle of a lead break when the band's playing, you're not going to notice it so much as you are in between sets when it's quiet. Like, oh, I got to click my booster on before we start playing this song. It's like, kapak, ka -ka 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 -ka, like that going out, you know. And like we play through headphones, and I've, I've been running a couple of overdrive type pedals before my new XMG30, which really is an excellent sounding multi effector, cab simulator, amp simulator, all in one type of deal. Uh, and I'm using a, a couple of pedals in front of it just to kind of uh, balance out the pickup volume, uh, the difference of switching between a high output pickup guitar with humbuckers and then some El Nico strats, uh, single coils. I found that, you know, I had written all of my patches on this Super Distortion. DiMarzio made these pickups called Super Distortion, and they're really high output. I think they're like 18K, the set that I have. And boy, I, I got to tell you, um, I tried a set of Fleor El Nico 5 humbuckers. And what they sent me ohmed out to like 8 ohms. And I was like, hey, you guys said these it was 14 ohms. What gives? So they sent me a replacement. And I installed those and they were 14 ohms, 14K, excuse me. And then I'm, I'm, I'm taste testing, and, the, and both of these car guitars are very similar. Actually, the one is, they're, they're uh, both headless guitars. The one is a bootlegger spade, the other one is a uh, Steinberger Spirit, my yellow Spirit. And the Spirit has the, the super distortions that I bought from Guitar Madness, Guitar Madness, Guitar Madness. And I got to tell you, those pickups are the ones. They are just... They're fatter. They've got this tone. I can't describe what it is, but it it just, they blow away the Fleur. There's no contest. So that's my two cents on the pickups. Now, when you have this popping, when you turn your pedal on and off the true bypass switch, it will pop, make a loud popping noise. And when you look into this on the forums, the first thing that you'll run into is people saying, if you solder in a one mega ohm, Maybe it might be 5 mega ohm would be a good place to start, and you can play with it anywhere from 1 mega ohm to 10 mega ohm resistor on the PCB, the input of the PCB to the ground is what they recommend. Now you think, oh, well, wouldn't that be do the same thing on the, on the jack? You could just go on the jack. Well, you'd think so, but it isn't. You really need to pull your pull-down resistors on the input of the PCB. And then they'll tell you, well, if, if one on the input doesn't work, try putting one on the output. You know, the thing about that is I've been down this road a bunch of times, and oftentimes it doesn't do anything. And the other thing that gets me about that is, well, you're adding 10 or 20 mega ohms of resistance to your bypass signal. Would you want to just tack a resistor, a 10 mega ohm resistor? That's like, isn't that like the highest resistor they make? You're going to just strap that across your input and output and be done with it, call it a day? I don't know, how can you call that pedal a true bypass pedal if you're adding 20 mega ohm of resistance in bypass? So that's my issue with that. I mean, number one, my issue with that as a solution is that it doesn't work. Now, it did work. I remember, I think it was a, Baldwin burns buzz around. Now this can be all kinds of reasons why you end up with the popping. And I'm this is kind of above my pay grade. It could be your amplifier, it could be the circuit, it could be the switch, it could be the LED. Now I found uh, with my recent rig I was using, I built a ZVEX show. And boy, I was I couldn't have been wronger about that circuit. I didn't like the name of it. I don't like names of pedals or knobs when it's like scrotum or like, I, I just, can we just call it volume? Do we have to call it something disgusting? Anyway, that's one of those things about guitar pedals that I, I, I don't, it's just not my style. 
I'm kind of prudish, you know. I think that that's between you and your significant other. And I'm 54. I'm not five or four. Anyway, I finally built myself a ZVEX show. And boy, is that a fantastic circuit. It, it, it really is. My initial thinking was, well, I started playing. Uh, I, 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 made, I got this new XMG30, and I made all the patches for it with the yellow guitar that has the super distortions in it. And then we were out playing live, and I'm like, this kind of isn't right, because, see, I wrote some of these songs on a Strat. And... Now, this is like a really complicated story. For a while, I had a humbucker equipped uh, Court 45 travel guitar, which is not here. Uh, it must be in the other room. I have my Court 45 humbucker guitar over here with ceramic pickups that, that were really hot. And then uh, I ditched that guitar, put it over to the side, and I got a strap. And that has El Nico 5 uh, single coils in it, which are much lower output. So... I found that when we were playing live, if I switched off to the Strat, all of a sudden, the, my multi-effector, which is a new XMG30, it wasn't responding right because I have the, the noise gate set at a level to respond to really hot pickups. So this guitar was too weak. It was like barely cutting through the noise gate. And then the patches that were supposed to be distorted weren't really distorted. They sounded like half distorted. They sounded terrible. So I thought, well, you know what? Let me look this up on the internet and see what people are doing. And they were like, oh, you can get a ZVEX show and just boost it a little bit. Plus, you'll pick up a little bit of something glassy that that show circuit adds to the sound. And I had a friend who had recommended me this show. And I was just like, yeah, every clean beef boost does that. Well, the ZVEX show has something. And the more you turn it up, the more it adds that coloration and cha changing. It's not a transparent pedal at all. And I really like what it does. I really do. Now, on the other hand, I have the Clark Gainster. Now, the version of the pedal that I built is actually called the Hoochie Mama because it uses paper and oil capacitors, giant carbon comp resistors. It's basically old tube amp parts. And it's real expensive or more expensive to build it that way. Uh, are you going to be able to hear a negatable difference? I don't know. I didn't build the cheaper version. I just got to tell you, I love this Clark Gainster, this Hoochie Mama pedal. I absolutely love it. It's so fat, and the distortion uh, is very pleasing. The overdrive is very pleasing. It's got a great tone control. Three-knob pedal, really great tone control. I love the tone circuit, the way it responds, and it's very useful. And I found that now playing around with the combination of these two pedals that I don't, I don't want to play my new XMG30 without them. When I shut it off, I'm like, whoa, that doesn't sound half as good. So it's turned into a thing, and those pedals were popping. They were popping. So I had tried the old pull-down resistor trick, and that didn't do it. So I'm going to show you how I was able to. We're eight minutes in, and I apologize, but... Uh, If you take a look over at AMZ, uh, this is Jack Orman site. So it's www.music.com. This is in the lab at LED. So uh, here we're seeing, this is the typical resistor, the current limiting resistor that sets the brightness of the LED. Here's an additional 390 ohm resistor and then this 10 microfarad capacitor to ground in between. My uh, Hoochie Mama pedal was popping really loudly, and I just cut in this 10UF right, uh, right in here. And, and this is the way that I wired it up, and it's actually, it appears to be in testing that did the trick. So he says in that article, you can go 10 microfarad, you can go 22 microfarad, you can go 47 microfarad, whatever you need to stop that popping but and again i have to stress this isn't a davy and goliath situation where you can just cut a capacitor in there and it's going to stop the popping because sometimes it can be the switch sometimes it can be the led sometimes it can be the circuit in the cases like and and this is where i i don't want to say oh well the pull down resistor is a bad idea you know i i don't like the pull down resistor because it plays with my bypass signal that's that's just one of those things. Now, people will tell you, oh, it doesn't really doesn't really affect it. 
So, I mean, if, you, it, it, if you've got your pedal and it's popping and you put a one mega ohm resistor on the input of the PCB going to ground and it just stops the problem, well, more power to you. I'm here to say the more, more common solution that you run into for pedal popping is pull down resistors. There's another one. There's another solution, and that's this capacitor on the LED. And that's what worked today on my Hoochie Mama pedal. So I was absolutely thrilled about that. I was really happy. We're working towards uh, getting this indoor rig warmed up. I cut in a NJM BBE 2150 uh, Sonic Enhancer Oral Exciter circuit into our MP3 unit that was in the living room. We didn't have one in there. Um, I've got one on my headphone amp, and it was shut off yesterday. I was like, man, this sounds terrible. And then I, I got, I, I just got like really fed up of my wife's tone. She's running through this old Zoom multi-effect that's on our practice space. And I was like, you know what? We're going to wire your pedal board in because it's got this limiter and there's a comp compressor and a limiter with a noise gate. It's, it's this excellent pedal board that we build. And why not? You know, why not? Uh, incorporate that if we can so hopefully we'll have a little bit better practice tonight I uh, the weather dropped and we opened the place up because it was like 78 in here with the heat off we opened it up and it got really cold and then my guitar wouldn't stay in tune at all it was like the the uh, the bootlegger guitar would just would not stay in tune I just kept tuning it and I would oh, he must be here. I would uh, play and uh, it would be out of tune within a quarter of the song go going by. So then we quickly realized that there's no heat in any of the building. We had opened, <laughs> opened up both of the patios and let all this cold air. It was like 66 degrees in here or something crazy. Oh, well, yeah, almost. It was morning it was. And then we closed it up and turned the heat on and there was nothing. So our neighbor had a problem with her heat. Uh, the valve rusted shut and it wouldn't shut off. So they had called the repair guy and he had replaced the valve. In the process, he needed to get some parts so they had shut the heat off overnight. But that's my life. We, we never have heat for, through the whole season in this apartment. It's always going out. Never consistent. There's always something. Yeah, yeah. For, for years it was fine and then all of a sudden started being problems and it's like there's always repair guys here. And the land, landlord's always mad at me about it. Even though I replaced all the zone valves and put new thermostats in a bunch of the units and did all this work and just get yelled at by him, you know, have him raise our rent. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to this uh, playing here in the living room. It's getting cold. We're not going to be doing remotes anymore. So we're getting this dialed in and trying to get this short set list where we can play it. We played last night and it was just was not good. I think Gopti wasn't feeling it. She was tired or crabby and I, I was in a foul mood and like nothing's been working right. Like we had we had a bad cable and then I went to um, replace a battery in one of the pedals and the electric screwdriver that I used to take the pedals apart died and uh, I had to replace that battery. So it's just like, I, I don't know. It was a lot, it was a lot. Like I'm, I was like making cables and just stupid stuff, you know? Stupid, stupid stuff. So I'm gonna try to get this Zvex show so it's not popping with that uh, 22UF or 10UF, whatever I put in there. And then at that point, um, it's, my grand, my grandkids' birthday celebration today, so we're gonna go hang out, do do a little bonfire thing with my daughter. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that, and then maybe we'll get to play again tonight. So uh, we 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 do have somebody coming. We have a friend of mine, that guy that I grew up with. He was actually really good friends with my younger brother, but I I was friends with him too, and he's gonna be coming over here. Uh, in about a week and I want to play for him and I really I'm just kind of stressing because we're so far away from being able to play well <laughs> and I'm, I'm like I just hate the, the set like every the, every song it's like oh this like I, I really liked this set earlier in the year and now I'm like Ugh. you know <laughs> I gotta write some new music 
but uh, yeah, pull down resistor, pull down resistor. Try that uh, capacitor treatment on your LED current limiting resistor. You know, pedal popping, it, it's one of those things. It's, it's frustrating, and, and I'll tell you what, you might be better off just getting a, a, a volume pedal, put it at the end of your chain, <laughs> and manually cut the volume if, if you need to adjust your pedals in between sets. That could, could be an easier solution in the long run. Anyway, you guys, take care of yourselves. Hug your pets. Stay warm and peace.